day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. We will start by reading Genesis chapter 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram, but Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and no one will inherit my estate? Is Eliezer of, uh, is Eliezer of this Damascus? And Abraham said, you, are, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is, who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and... Uh, and count the stars if, ne if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, You shall, so shall your offspring be. Abraham, say, Abraham believed the Lord and, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of your, of the Chaldeans who, to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Then Abraham brought all this to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nations they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth uh, generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, To your descendants I give this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates, to the land of the Canaanites, the Canaanites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephites, Amorites, Canaanites, Gegashites, and Jebusites. What can we learn from this? Well, we learn the we learn about the goodness of God in verse thirteen to fourteen. We we may not understand why God allowed the suffering that the Israelites endured, but we know we can trust God no matter what. Because God isn't like us human beings to lie. God isn't like human beings to lie. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not, and not fulfill? God made a promise to Abraham that his descendants will be so many. God did God fulfill his promise? Yes. Did God for what, what I'm saying is did God fulfill his promise? Yes. 
We will see that in Exodus chapter 14, verse 30 to that. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the, on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses his servant. God's promises are always going to happen. Here are some promises God made to you. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. Psalms chapter 34 verse 8 Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. Psalms chapter, Psalms chapter 16 verse 11 You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This is a verse about going about going to be with God, living with Him after we die or when He, oh, when he comes back. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Psalms chapter 18 verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Hebrews 13 verse 5 Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God has promised to never leave you, dear Christian. He is your rock. If you are in trouble, you can pray to Him. But keep in mind, fellow Christian, to always pray according to God's will. God has promised to always love you. God will never change. The same Jesus that loved you so much that he will die for you is the same Jesus today. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 Actually, no. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. God loves you. He has given you all these promises. God isn't a human being that he can lie. So let us trust God. Let us trust his promises and let us continue in our fight against sin. God loves you very much. He has given you all these promises that he will come back again that he will never leave you he will never forsake you that he is your rock and that you can depend on him whenever you you face troubles in this life he will always be with you day in and day out he will watch over you. He may allow troubles in your life, but that's because he has a plan. Because there are some Christians out there that are being persecuted. Verse 6. So we, say th so we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Some Christians face persecution. Does that mean God isn't with them? God is with them. Look at the apostles. 
they were persecuted but God was with them even though they were persecuted Jesus promised uh, anyone who faces persecution in this life that their reward will be great in in heaven so yes God has a plan has a plan for everyone God will work everything for our good he will work every bad thing for our good look at the apostles they suffered persecution how did God work everything for their good well well look well look at them now their reward in heaven is great god worked for them uh, god worked their the the situation for their good it doesn't have to be here on earth god can work he doesn't really have it doesn't have to be here that verse in the bible that says that the that God will can work everything for our good. It doesn't have to be to be like here on on earth. It can also be yeah, it doesn't have to be like do you understand what I'm saying? Like like let's say I face persecution right now where where if I believe in Jesus Christ I I'm go- I'm going to die. Well, how how can God work that for my good? Well, well I'm um, well. I know that that the work that I'm doing right now is not in vain because the Bible says, the Bible tells everyone who labor in the Lord that the work. is not in vain so if i so like right now it, like right, like let's say if it's illegal to believe in jesus christ how can god work that for my good well he can work that for my good in the future like yeah in the in the future like he can give me he can my reward will be great in in heaven that's what i'm trying to say god can work everything for our good god is your father god is your god so let us trust in god's promises and believe in him because god can do anything he desires Nothing is impossible to God. Because the same God because the same God that created the universe out of nothing by his word alone is the same God that is the same God that can can work any bad thing in your life for your good. because when we look at because like let's say right now you may be facing a tough time remember this you will be with god for eternity just imagine that eternal happiness forever happy you you will be forever happy when you go to be with the lord You will never experience sadness. Not no you will never experience sadness. You will make known to me the path of life. You will fill me here here we see what will happen to us. when we go to be with God you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand 
this is a comfort to us. So, how can we apply the story of, of God making a covenant with Abraham? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That is what、uh, that is what it says over here. Even Paul, maybe I think he mentioned that in some of his letters. Maybe in, in Romans or in the book of Acts. I, I remember somewhere. Maybe it was Paul.、Uh, they met him. He mentioned this verse. No, not this. This verse. Abraham, be, Abraham believed, in the, believed the Lord and he, and he credited it to him as righteousness. So, what can we learn from. The covenant from the Lord's covenant with Abraham. We learn that that we can trust God's promises that He has made to us because God cannot lie because He is not us that He should lie. He, he is not affected by sin because He is holy, He is righteous, He is perfect in every, in every way. Because he is God. So we can trust him. We can have faith in him. So let us live a life of faith. Let us, let us continue in our fight against sin. Let us practice righteousness. Let us do all, do all that Jesus says we must do. But even if we fail, we should, even if we may fail, we should repent, we should humble ourselves and repent and continue to fight against sin. Because remember this your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So, whatever gift. Whatever spiritual gift God has given you right now, be faithful at it. Use that gift right now to serve God. Whatever spiritual gift God has given you, use it to serve God. So, my brothers and sisters, What I'm trying to what, what's the point of this whole video? The point of this whole video is to learn from this story that we can trust God's promises and we can trust God's promises. So, and another thing is we should continue、uh, in our fight against sin. Sorry for the noise, it's sorry for the noise. Right now it's raining, so that's why there's a lot of noise. Yeah, thank you for listening to this video. I, we will end with a poem. Well, this, the title of this poem is Well Done, Good and Faithful Servant. I am nothing special, I m what God has made. The talents I have are not always displayed. I am not a horn blower, I am not one to shout. But I work for the Lord as I travel about.